Cool. Uh, hello, everyone. Good, after good afternoon, and thanks for joining. I hope you all are keeping safe. I'm Siddharth, co-founder and CEO at Icon Labs, and along with me is Navani, Chief Marketing Officer and co-founder at Uncanny Vision. So I'll again repeat the hygiene factors. Before starting, I'll just I've already started recording the video with your permissions. Kindly put your uh, video and audio off so that we get the proper bandwidth and request you to all put your questions in the chat window. We will take each one of them at the end of the session. Thank you. So, uh, Nani, uh, you can move to the next slide. So today's topic, right, computer vision and edge computing, what are we going to discuss in this uh, topic or in this session? So we are planning to take up the computer vision use cases and applications which are there. Why do we need to move these applications to the edge? Why edge and why not cloud? So that's the another point which we hope we'll be discussing today. Where to start from? So if you are planning to move some of your applications to edge, where to start from? Some of your computer vision applications to the edge or run your models to the edge, where to start from? Which is the right hardware, the software, the technology stack is what we will be discussing. And the challenges faced uh, during do, during a uh, edge deployment. So, what are the various challenges you face, and how do you overcome these challenges? Is what we're going to take it up. And at the end of the session is where the Q and A will start. So, this is what we're going to uh, follow. Uh, over to you, Navni. You can start it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Siddharth. Um, welcome everyone for joining the session. As Siddharth pointed out, uh, uh, computer vision and uh, specifically edge uh, and edge AI computing uh, is uh, very relevant area in this day and age. So there are a lot of interesting use cases and applications for um, specifically today, we're going to talk about video analytics and so that the team have plans to do other types of uh, computer vision is a very broad field um, that is rapidly evolving, especially in the context of AI. Uh, so today we're going to narrow down and focus on specific set of use cases in video analytics. Um, specifically, we're going to talk about um, areas that we and, and in Canivision work on, which is vehicle monitoring and people monitoring. Um, so in vehicle monitoring, there are multiple use cases. Uh, you want to monitor uh, the gate, provide security, uh, parking monitoring, uh, using ANPR here stands for automatic number plate recognition, um, smart city use cases. So we'll go into each one a little bit more detail. And then uh, people monitoring. We presently are doing a lot of work in COVID uh, compliance monitoring, worker safety, perimeter protection, ATM monitoring. Again, these are uh, specific examples of applications of computer vision in the context of video analytics. There's a lot more possible, right? All the way from autonomous driving to drones to um, uh, the AICAN team, for example, has uh, vehicles that they work with. Um, so it's a wide range of applications. So this is a narrow subset that we're going to talk about as examples. So let's go into um, applications in video analytics. So here the idea is um, with a camera and with uh, advanced computer vision software, can you automatically read the license plate, number plate, uh, classify vehicles, count the number of vehicles, and uh, automate some of the parking operations um, in various parking lots and uh, traffic in traffic violations. You start to see cameras everywhere, right? Now, how do you do this? And then again, why edge? We'll talk about that. Uh, uh, in the context of all of these applications, we'll talk about why edge is relevant and how do you solve that? And so that we'll talk about that. Um, so these vehicle analytics application can be used for gate security, uh, even toll management. This is in the context of uh, um, whether in, in India with toll plazas, or internationally with uh, highway-based toll management and uh, traffic management. So these are all applications where we apply computer vision for monitoring of vehicles in um, uh, in an edge-based scenario. So let's take one even more, uh, go deeper into a specific application. So here we're talking about intelligent traffic management solution. So here on the top right, you see a picture of a highway. Uh, there's a highway in India. And you see at the top, there are these cameras. So we do computer vision with that. And uh, this is the idea for this is to do traffic management and enforcement system. So here, uh, you see this box over here, right? So what we do is as vehicles come by, at this point, of course, it shows an empty, but as vehicles come by, these cameras are capturing the video. 
And this video is processed at the edge where we um, capture the vehicles, the license plate, uh, how fast they are going, uh, the number of vehicles, the license plate of the vehicles. All of it is processed locally, and the information is sent to the cloud. Right. So that is uh, an example of computer vision, edge, uh, and uh, uh, processing uh, happening with uh, a remote location. So these are all usually quite remote. So these are all in the highways and outskirts. It's a very extreme case. Uh, this is one of the more challenging of the use cases to do. And but then similar ones you have within the cities as well. So you have red light violation, speed enforcement. So these are more in the city. You see this one, this is a traffic junction uh, in the city. And here again, you have to detect vehicles. So here you see this red light, but you can see people starting to cross. Sometimes as soon as people walk by, people cross the road and move forward, right? So here again, we apply computer vision and detect if somebody has crossed the junction and uh, uh, basically uh, generate an alert and uh, uh, capture that information like we're showing here, capture the license plate uh, um, information and send it to the authorities um, for, for monitoring, right? So traditionally in the past, this kind of thing used to be done with mechanical inductive loops under the ground. Uh, in fact, many countries still do that. But that is, uh, in the Indian context, you can think about it, right? You can see the zebra crossing is not even there. So at the end of a monsoon uh, rain, some of these roads it, uh, under the road putting these mechanical sensors are very, um, first of all, it's expensive. Second, they, they'll stop working after you know two monsoon rains and they'll stop working, right? So this is where applying computer vision, uh, it, it's a newer technique to do this. It allows us to do build much more robust systems than uh, uh, more mechanical uh, and inductive systems that were used in the past. So this is uh, one example again, uh, application use case where uh, here also, uh, connectivity in most Indian roads might not always be great. So we process it right locally at the edge and only the information gets sent out to the cloud. Another uh, application is, for example, what we call gate NPR, where uh, we have to read the license plate and open this gate. Right? So what we do is as vehicles enter, so there is a whitelisted set of vehicles which are approved by the security to enter um, the, the facility. This could be residential, this could be commercial. So what happens is uh, literally right under this boom barrier, there is an edge uh, processing system where we run all our computer vision algorithms. And as vehicles come in real time, the system through the video feed immediately processes this. And then if it's in the database, it will open the gate. Now this system is crucial because at the end of the evening where everyone is coming back to their apartment or in the morning to offices, the system doesn't work if network connectivity goes off. That's a big problem. So the system is fully self-contained. Even if the network goes out, system will continue to work. It might not be able to accept new vehicles in the database, but it'll continue to work. So this is uh, what we call gate NPR, and this is something that we uh, apply fully edge-based system um, uh, to do gate security, right? gate NPR, gate security, so digitize the moment. So the alternatives would have been look at the number plate, write it on the uh, notebook, and then allow that still happens in government offices and all that. So we're trying to uh, make it more digital and advanced. And the other option would have been uh, RFID tags, which you have to give it to different people. If they leave the apartment or office, you have to get it back from them. So there's a lot of um, uh, tactical management issues when you use any other type of authentication. With number plate, all it is is just read the license plate and let them in. That's basically the uh, technique. So these are two, what we call in vehicle analytics, one is traffic, like a larger view at the highway or the city level, and then uh, at the gate level from a, a building, uh, whether it's residential or commercial perspective. Then uh, another big area of applications is in people uh, analytics. So here again, you have a lot of cameras. Here the requirement tends to be a lot more cameras. You have to have a lot of data. So we do people counting, crowd detection, uh, intrusion detection. Now one of the other things we've done in the COVID context is detect if people are not maintaining social distance. So detect people to see if they are within a, a, a distance. And if they're not maintaining six feet distance, immediately generate alert. 
uh, and take action based on that. Right? So these are examples of uh, people analytics that we do uh, using computer vision. So uh, the, within the one first one is just count the number of people. So you have limits uh, these days now. In a given shop, you can only have 10 people or 100 people, depending on the size of the facility. So we count the number of people in, and then if the number increases beyond a certain number, generate alert. So here also, uh, you know, processing locally uh, is highly desirable because as uh, people are coming in, um, you have to count and real time take action on it, right? So doing it on the edge uh, is highly preferred. Um, uh, here's another uh, different uh, use case, which is in uh, uh, worker safety monitoring. So here, uh, uh, the requirement is, uh, this is a steel plant where we're doing this. What we do is uh, we detect people and extract multiple metadata to check if they're wearing safety helmet, safety vest, and if they're not wearing the safety helmet or vest immediately, generate alert. Of course, this is a very um, dangerous area. They have to, but sometimes if the work is not trained properly, they don't uh, follow the rules. For this industrial uh, thing, they have very strict requirements. If uh, um, the rules are not followed to some extent, it is actually the problem of the management. So they um, put these systems so that um, safety rules are maintained and can be compared against different industries, right? So here again, you have to uh, process it, uh, check real time if people are there. The other one also we do is if people go closer to this molten metal, then the requirements for what dress uniform they wear is different. They have to wear these aluminum type vest, but if there is no molten metal, then they can wear normal uh, safety vest. So again, it depends. So based on the condition, the system has to adapt and put different rules. Now here again, the, the challenges, these kind of things cannot be done in the cloud because uh, this, you know, strict, these are all um, uh, secure campuses. They can't have this data outside. So you have to process it locally within the facility. So it's a strict requirement to do all of it and not have the video go to the cloud. Um, so those are uh, important reasons why we do it. Then the other one example I mentioned is in the context of uh, COVID-19. Um, people have to maintain these strict uh, rules of social distancing. They have to maintain a distance of at least six feet or, um, uh, or more. Um, so we have to do this with high accuracy. We detect people um, when, even when their body is not fully visible. We have to detect and monitor the distance uh, between people. And then if uh, the rules are um, uh, broken, they immediately generate alert. So these alerts can be uh, anything from generating a siren that immediately tells people to um, you know, follow the rules or regularly send alerts to uh, central law safety office where this can be monitored. So this is what we call social distance monitoring. And the other one uh, relatively obvious is to detect uh, if everyone's wearing face masks. So here, for example, some people are wearing face masks, some are not, um, to generate alerts. And uh, the various actions can be taken based on that um, uh, monitoring of uh, you know, COVID-related rules. Right? And this is an application of computer vision um, in, uh, in a generate these alerts. Now, what does the overall technology stack look like? So a lot of what we do is with AI. So on the lowest, lower most component, you have the compute storage networking. And this is the base on which we're building everything. Then we have uh, Docker, we have uh, you know, communication, there is optimization layers. On top of which you have these uh, uh, um, different functions for uh, AI uh, functionality in computer vision. So these are all different modules that all communicate together and then send events to uh, IoT monitoring dashboard um, for configuration, licensing, dashboard, and all that. So that's the overall stack. And in terms of the overall flow, if you see, uh, what you see is at the edge, but then you also need to be able to monitor, manage. This is where, um, you know, the, the, um, that will talk about how to do these sort of uh, software updates, management of alerts, uh, uptime, and all that. Uh, Naveen, Naveen yeah. on that uh, uh, software stack, mm -hmm. um, is it uh, a silver bullet that you are prescribing or have you 
uh, they're showing right one other other yeah correct this is not always the silver bullet there are many ways to do it so this is one method this is uh, what we do at and okay uh, and uh, have you built reusable components around let's say at one particular place the architecture uh, they yeah. are using uh, different set of uh, let's say tools so will your uh, architecture uh, seamlessly uh, fit into that or mm -hmm. uh, or not so when you say reusable uh, you, you you mean across different applications correct yeah so within um, uh, reason for example in the context of people and we've shown different use cases right so the there would be core modules which are reusable uh, between different functionality we take vehicle analytics the core modules will be reusable against different functions but then you also need to customize for certain use cases so um, like how the the vehicles uh, go during day and night they differ so you might need different models for that um, you know how you see it at um, you know one view of it might differ so you might have core models which are reusable and some things which are very application specific so there will in general be a combination so unlike a general web or uh, you know cloud software you know you have a mongodb database or something and it's completely reusable doesn't matter whether you're using it for finance or you're using it for other right so in computer vision there is still quite a bit of uh, customization that's required um uh, there is some components that are reusable but many have to be customized oh. uh, anshuman, and, and, and anshuman, can we can we pass the questions at the end or you can put it on the comment section we will take it yeah please. sure siddharth yeah, yeah please Um, so we talked about the, the technology stack, and then the technology workflow is you have these edge devices, you have cameras, edge devices, and then you have events, and then there's a lot of other business logic and optimization that comes kind of overall in the flow. So we're going to focus a little bit more on this left side, which is you know how do you get things on the edge, how do you update it, um, and, and this is kind of very it'll be custom to each. How what exactly flow do you use? Uh, do you use AI? Do you not use AI? all of that? Is depends on the application, but this is the the interesting bit, right? So you take the video, you process it locally, and then send events to the cloud. That's kind of the um, the key focus of this is where the major computer vision happens. Now, uh, why edge? This is an important topic. Um, so we have adopted and significantly focus on this. this is very uh, important. For example, latency. I showed you one example with uh, where the gate opens and closes, right? So uh, in that sort of case, the latency is very, very important. You have to do it uh, within a second in order to get that information. So in some applications, the latency is very, very important. Uh, so it depends. So you have to uh, take, if you're trying to solve a particular problem, uh, you have to understand uh, what are the requirements and then based on it, see if edge makes sense. So for example, let's say you're doing medical diagnosis, right? So you're trying to scan a person's body and then, um, you know, the brain or whatever, and then get the scan image. Now you get the person in, you take the image, you scan them, and then later, you know, like an hour later, it's sufficient to have the image to, um, uh, to the doctor, for example. You store it, the doctor, the radiologist can look at it later, so in some cases, latency is not very critical. Whereas when we're doing this gate thing, if the latency is more than a second, people really don't like it. And they'll ask the gates to be permanently open after a while, especially busy hours, they'll not like it, right? So it depends a lot on the application. You have to understand what are your latency requirements. So the latency is uh, very low, especially if you're talking in seconds, then you definitely have to do things on the edge. Uh, cloud is, is too much latency to go to the cloud, process it, and come back. Right? Bandwidth might be there, but the other one is bandwidth requirements. Now, uh, the cost of bandwidth as well, especially. So, if you have a remote location and it's only the connectivity, only connectivity you have, let's say, is a 4G connectivity, the max bandwidth you're going to get over a cell-based connectivity can be highly limited. Like you, you're lucky if you have one megabit per second. Now, if you have 
four cameras that you have to process. Sending all the video to a central cloud and then process it there is, is just practically not possible. So, but if you have wired, you know, fiber connectivity, then it might be easier. So it depends. You have to understand what are your requirements. Quite often with video, the amount of bandwidth, if you're processing, say, four videos and each one has HD resolution at, say, four megabit per second, with four cameras, you're looking at about 20 megabit per second, which in peak bandwidth you might have, but consistently you might not have that bandwidth always. And if you don't have it, that means you're going to lose some video. Then you're losing people or vehicles, and it becomes a problem. Right? Some applications are OK, some are not OK. The other one is processing power. Um, so uh, computer vision algorithms especially are processing intensive. So you have to understand what are your processing requirements. And uh, in, in the edge, you can get um, you know, the right processing system for the application needed. Then you're much better off, especially when it comes to cost. So the last uh, fundamental thing that really decides whether this makes sense business-wise or not is cost, right? So um, cost-wise, what happens in the cloud, cloud generally everyone thinks is cheap. But the reality, once you start processing a lot of data, and video, unlike any other thing, is a lot of data, cost can quickly add up. If you just have one server handling for five cameras, your monthly cost can be in tens of thousands of uh, rupees, and then quickly um, uh, the, the cost significantly more than just buying some edge hardware and put it in the so that's, uh, I mean, those are your key considerations you need to worry about uh, on why edge uh, makes sense. Right? Now, uh, where to start from? The key is most of these type of applications, a camera, some, where, somewhere to run your computer vision stuff, and then some kind of dashboard where you see these things. It's possible all of these are combined together in some cases, but it's good to think of it as three chunks uh, of things. Sometimes they can be in the same place, and some places they can be a few meters apart. So it depends. But conceptually, think of these three things where you need to um, run your overall software application. Okay? Now, camera choice, in this case, for video analytics, we have a wide range of options. Pretty much all of these cameras today are on web, so any of these cameras work, and these are cameras that we support. Uh, all of them uh, work fine. They give a common uh, video. But there are also these analog cameras, in which case you'd need to convert them with a DVR or something like that and provide it. So that's one way to do it. Um, then there are these custom applications. If you have, for example, a box and cameras nearby, uh, in some case, for example, in machine vision, the camera can just be a USB camera. Right? So that's also possible. So based on your applications, you need to I uh, think which camera makes uh, the best sense and connect it. Uh, then the important part comes to the processing system. Right? So now there's a wide range of options, uh, like shown here, for simple object detection, maybe classification applications, the lowest end, like ARM Cortex A7 CPU on a Raspberry Pi, uh, might be sufficient to start with. So this is the low end. So for example, you know, there were a few uh, the students who were on start with as small as a Raspberry Pi and be able to deploy uh, real-world computer application applications and get things running, right? So your consideration would be you would operate it at a lower frame rate, right? But functionally, you could have something with as small as a Raspberry Pi. Um, that's on the minimum, like, basic level. And then if you go to a more advanced level, if you're having lots of cameras that you have, you could operate on something like a really sophisticated server um, where you could run multiple video analytics with a lot of cameras. Um, it can go anywhere from the low end Pentium Intel device to uh, NVIDIA Jetson Xavier, or even a server with uh, NVIDIA T4 cards, right? So the scale is very big um, in terms of where you run. So the key things are how many cameras how many video analytics that you need to run. So the processing system is a key consideration before deciding which system to use. So that, this is just to give you uh, some examples of where you could get started. Okay. Um, so these are sort of uh, key overviews. So we talked 
um, at the high level some of the key application use cases of computer vision in the sub area called video analytics uh, there are other areas right uh, so not just ip cameras you are uh, medical an analysis you have automotive self driving cars you have drones you have a lot of other things so in this context we focused on a set of applications within this video analytics with surveillance cameras and we talked about people and vehicle analytics we talked about uh, you know high level um, uh, workflow and then where you could get started with this sort of a system um so now um, so that will pick up and talk about the key challenges and uh, uh, solutions how we can address to uh, build systems like this and uh, and then we'll come back to q and a yeah. over hey. to you. Sure. Thanks, Namni. Uh, hope oh, my video and audio is clear. Uh, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, and you can hear and see me, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, th thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. So I'll mostly talk about what faced when deploying an edge solution, predominantly in computer vision applications, right? Uh, as Namini said, right, there are many pieces of elements onto it, right? You have a camera, you have a networking, which is being there, and, and most of the places where it fails out is a network problem. And then how do you reliably upgrade your model? So these are some of the live problems you would have faced when you have tried, or you would have tried deploying a computer vision application, right? Uh, you can relate it to it, right? Unreliable upgrades of applications and models. How do I remote access these devices so that I can debug and diagnose problems? What should I do to monitor my unstable network? So these are key problems which you face or challenges which you face while doing a edge deployment. And that's that's one of the core reasons where at least uh, uh, till now people were preferring uh, 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 cloud solutions. But now as, as what Navni mentioned, right, cloud solutions are also not viable enough because of latency, because of bandwidth, cost, and all the other factors, right? So we have to move to edge. But then at the same time, we have to make sure that, that how do we solve these problems uh, when doing a large or mass scale deployment? So right, uh, how do we overcome these challenges? What we spoke about, right? Network challenges, upgrade applications. So, uh, how uh, remote monitoring? Uh, so one thing which we have to make sure that we are able to remote monitor all our assets, starting from camera, the the devices installed, the LPU, essentially local processing. Uh, so that um, we can't hear you. Uh, so that you've muted yourself by mistake. Ah. Oh, sorry. I don't know. But okay, now we can hear you. Sure. Uh, I don't know when where was uh, where I left. Uh, okay, I'll start again then. So, how do we overcome these challenges? Is predominant. Uh, am I am I audible now? Okay. Yes, you are. Yes, okay. you are. So, uh, how do we overcome these challenges? Are a we have to make sure that we are able to remotely monitor these assets on field, starting with cameras, the network which is deployed, the edge devices uh, which are deployed, and the applications which are running on them. Uh, the second part is we have to make sure that we are able to reliably update the models, applications, configurations, maybe configurations to the level of camera itself to make sure that we are we 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 are on sync with everything. So that How, can you put in uh, presentation mode? Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Uh, how do we log these, all the details, the events and alerts which we are getting so that uh, if there's any fault in the system, we should be able to check it out. And then at the same time, again, when fault happens, we should be able to remotely diagnose the problem and then fix it at that point of time. The reason being that right, all these deployments or edge deployments would be far away from you. So, uh, or, or in remote locations could be on a, on a, toll booth could be on a, a street light itself, right? Where it is virtually impossible for anyone to go and fix up issues on life in life. Uh, 
So where I can help? So what exactly we can help with? So it's it's a in, in simple definition, it's a software solution where we help you to monitor, manage, securely access, and upgrade array of remotely deployed IoT devices and applications. So at ICANN, we help across edge deployments to help you to monitor, manage, and access these uh, remotely de de devices and applications. If you see here, right, it starts with IoT gateways and could be one of the devices which you could use in computer vision as well. Uh, as a as a, uh, a computing device, edge servers which are also being used. If you have multiple cameras, you predominantly in a in a people monitoring setup or in a live a retail setup, right? You would be using edge servers itself to uh, uh, do edge computing on these Vidonatics feed. Robotic arms, e vehicles, retail surveillance, and roads. All these are classic examples of edge computing, is where I can help you. Now, what essentially that means, right? If you are developing your applications or if you are uh, uh, deploying your edge uh, solutions for computer vision, right? You have to A, decide on the hardware operating we spoke about right what, what is the minimum you can start with what is the advanced you can start with and then what are the applications which you want to work, talk about so we, we discuss various applications it could be uh, covid related applications like face detection mass detection social distance detection or maybe worker safety detection so these are the simple things these are some of the applications that you would like to take care but what essentially comes along with the deployment or live deployment re remote deployment is you have to make sure of privacy and security when these when these devices are deployed on field you have to make sure that you are able to remotely connect them or access them you have to make sure that the device monitoring application monitoring network monitoring is in place and then subsequently you are able to upgrade your models as well and then upgrade not only models but also configurations and other related things as well and that's where icon helps you to do all of these things so that for you it's just decision on the hardware and the applications you want to run the edge right and how do it all happens right so this is a normal top topology which navni also spoke about yeah right you have multiple cameras and then the lpu local processing unit and which is sending data feedback to the cloud in, in some cases or even to the cloud. So what is essentially required is an icon agent or agent which can be deployed on these edge devices. And these agents can be deployed on any Linux or Android running devices. And once these agents are deployed is where it helps you to monitor each and every aspect of your deployment, remote deployment from the cloud. Right? So, uh, now again when you are talking about a scale deployment on on these uh, of these applications edge edge applications for computer vision right uh, on the the day of a life of a devops engineer looks like something he has to do a deployment he has to do a monitoring operational perform diagnostics and debugging and at the end of the day create reports so if certain sites are not working, he has to uh, operate on them, restart them. If things are not working, monitor them, deploy new applications to them, upgrade these applications, and then diagnose and debug. So what, what I can help with predominantly in all these cases is pro provide a complete over-the-air upgrade. Helps you with monitoring the devices, applications, containers, everything, container deployment. Remote secure access, you can access any of your connected device through cloud, with just through SSH or Telnet, and then create reports and analysis at the end of the day, how many of my sites are working, why are they not, if, if certain are not working, what is the problem, what's the network look like in these sites, how my applications are performing. All these reports and analysis can be performed at the end of the day. I'll very quickly show you how all these can be done uh, so that you get a feel, and then uh, it, it gets you very easy. It, it gets very easy for you to now start with your own edge computer application within a few hours itself. If the again, if the hardware and the application is in place, cool. Uh, so you could see here, right? This is the demo site which we have in place. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm audible, right? Just a check. Yes, that we can okay. hear you. Yes, awesome. loud and clear. Awesome. So yeah, this is what a dashboard looks like. So if you could see, right, the agents which are deployed on these edge computing devices, there are six agents which are deployed as of now. Right now, there are two which are up for, which are down, you can locate them. Predominantly profiles of them, so essentially create profiles. All your Bangalore devices or sites are in one place, or all your Pune devices are in another. And then these are your applications. These are your edge applications, computer vision app, edge applications, which are running on these uh, uh, edge computing devices here. Right? Uh, oops. Sorry for that. So you could see here, right? Uh, 
I have two devices which are up. I can remotely connect to them. Uh, uh, I can access them uh, through my control. No VPN required, nothing else required. You can remotely access these devices. You can, yeah, in case of a mass deployment, there are tags associated with each of the device, which are also configurable. Based on these tags is where you can find and filter the devices and perform action. So I want all the devices which are in Bangalore and are running X version of my models. You can very easily do that because it'll be tagged. Your application versions could be tagged here and the locations or any other factor would be tagged here, the hardware. So you can do all those things to create filters and then manage it here. Going inside the device site, you could see all the interface details of the device. Uh, in case you wish to execute commands or you, you wish to get some data from a specific device, you could do that. So I want to run LS on this device. I have the data, yeah. uh, all of them. Predominantly, this is, again, a very interesting feature where you get to know the uh, a complete uptime of your devices. When was it up? When was it down? Why exactly are your devices or the infrastructure elements are down uh, altogether. So today, if you see here, right, today is 7th of October. Each brick is one hour here. Um, so the device even started on 7th of September itself, uh, where it started around 5.30 a.m. Clicking on here is where you will get to know the health, essentially, why was it down uh, at that point of time. All the events associated with this device. So you could see here, right, the device is operating on a low voltage. There is application deployment failure, which happened on this device. So which makes life easier for you to manage and monitor these devices from the cloud very easily. Uh, and to, again, upgrade them, I'll show you how to do that. So uh, uh, what is, the, uh, as, as Navani also mentioned, right, your applications, edge applications, computer, predominantly in computer vision, are, com uh, are somewhat resource and intensive so you have to make sure that the applications which you are running are not taking a toss on your system altogether or the network altogether. So, uh, it becomes much more essential to very closely monitor the resource consumption of each of your applications and then see they are in symphony or not so here is where you do it the complete resource monitoring of your uh, applications so data consumption speed network speed so uh, when if the speeds are low or the the, the data, data consumption or the bandwidth is low you'll find the details here itself right uh, logs of your application logs your system logs all come in a single pane here itself and you can configure whatever logs you want so the, it could be any other thing Yes, uh, here is where you can monitor your processes, applications, and all those things. So here is where I'm running an Nginx application on this device. It's a Docker application. I can check it out whether it's up, down. I can start and stop it from the cloud itself. I can check out the resource consumption of each of your applications, the logs the application is generating. Uh, then the other binary applications which are in place, monitor them. You can very specifically monitor a process as well. So I'm here uh, monitoring Docker D as a process. So it's running for four months. It's all well. So uh, and, and all this is configurable. Tomorrow you want to monitor very specific application or a process for you, you can do that. Right? Uh, peripherals, uh, essentially, there is no peripheral to this device. But yeah, peripherals are predominantly the cameras which are uh, attached to it for it for us uh, computer vision case. So all the IP cameras which are connected to your LPUs will come under peripheral as where it is where you will monitor them. You'll be able to have an access to them or see whether they are setting feed in the right interval or not. Any disruption happening in the peripherals will you will get an alert, essentially events and alerts in the total thing. Okay, I'll just move to one of the other device here as well. Yeah, to show you something. So uh, I just moved to another dashboard here to show you how you can, again, access your attached camera. So here you could see, right, there's a deployment which is done. This uh, live deployment which is done in one of the buildings in Bangalore. So uh, the, the device which is running on is this one. Uh, sorry, Dell device. And it's uh, you know, connected to a Netgear router. And this is what the camera is on. So now, in case if you wish to check out remotely, so since the agent is not installed on the camera, but you can access your camera as well from the cloud. In case uh, 554 is the port where the RTSP schemes are sent it out. I just get it, copy it. Yeah. On the VLC player, I'm okay. I think I have to share the whole screen. Just a moment. Right? Yeah, here it is. 
So without sending the feed to the cloud, I can view my camera feed directly on the cloud. Okay. So that's also possible. So uh, and there's no agents running on the camera; just the agents are running on the LPU. So you have a complete control of all your assets on the field. Right. I'll just close this. Just a moment. Uh, yeah, I hope you can see my screen right again. Uh, yes. Now, how, the, 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 there was one common question which was asked in the portal as well. How do we upgrade the models and the applications here? So this is a very simple way to do an upgrade of your applications and models. So if it's a Docker or container application through the portal, you have to just mention the compose file. To the uh, uh, to here. So once once uploading the compose file, your applications will set up here, which is predominantly your you could say a app store for you. And going to any of your profile where you want to deploy, say I want to deploy this application or update this application on all the Bangalore devices, just choose an application which has to be deployed or updated. Once you do this, uh, your applications will be a part of the system, and then you can again subsequently monitor predominantly it directly from the application section here, which will come up here. If it's a Docker application, if it's another native application, you can monitor it through the process monitoring part. If if it's not a Docker application and you wish to upgrade it, you you have this way. So you have to provide an artifact to us, a package file of your application, and then just perform a deployment on on where which all devices you want to push this application or push this model to. And you'll have the result like this. Okay, I pushed the uh, application. It took me 56 seconds. All the states of my applications will be coming up here. Um, 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 if it's a pass, success, or a failure, all these details will be mentioned here. The logs will be collected for your devices. And you can do it for thousands of your devices deployed on screen. You will have a clear picture how many devices are upgraded, not upgraded, why they failed, and all of that. So it makes a life much more simpler for you to start your own deployment very quickly. To the portal or to the application situation, uh, uh, the, the complete events part, and, and I'll just spend some time in the reporting section as well, because this is also uh, essential. So I want uh, to create a report of all the devices which are set by vending machine, and then a network uptime. So for, at the end of the day, what is the network uptime for these devices look like? How my processes are uh, 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 running? How's the CPU usage of these devices? Are? Yeah. So in fact, one of the devices. Completely down with network. The rest two are doing good. The CPU usage is also pretty well. So this, these are the places where you can generate. This is the place where you can generate reports, send it to the higher management for a, 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 a feed, uh, essentially to make sure that you are man monitoring. Uh, sorry, you you are in place with your SLAs, to your end customers where they say that okay, your network uptime should be not less than ninety uh, percent. Uh, sorry, it should be more than ninety percent. Or your CPU usage and all those things details can be come up. There. So you can uh, do a complete reporting. Um, this is pretty much it. Where I want to show you how easy it is to essentially uh, manage your whole infrastructure, edge infrastructure, predominantly in computer vision applications. I'll uh, stop sharing for the time being. Uh, maybe, yeah. And in fact, you can try it out at, at experience.icon.io by yourself. And uh, that's what we have. you can do it out. Um, um, now we can take up questions here. Uh, um, now, is that okay? Yes, yes, uh, so that. Um, cool. yeah. So let me start with questions here. Then. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So, Namni, question to you: Is your technology stack uh, hardware agnostic? That is, can it work on edge compute GPU platforms such as NVIDIA, Intel, Movidius, or Qualcomm? Uh, how do you solve problems around optimizing your edge AI models for the target hardware? Yeah. So, good question. Uh, so, the uh, we support uh, from Uncanny Vision these different hardware that you asked, but. Um, uh, by itself, each of the software is not automatically like uh, each of these vendors today have different optimization stack, right? So NVIDIA has their own optimization stack and um, Intel has their open, we know. So we support different ones. So you have to optimize um, 
for uh, you know unfortunately you have to optimize separately for each uh, platform so you know you, you choose and then you uh, have to optimize and if you have to support a different piece of hardware for various uh, cost or availability or whatever reason you have to kind of do that re-optimization for each of these platforms um, so they are um, we wish they were platform agnostic for example you build an android application it just runs on any phone right any android phone so unfortunately uh, computer vision applications today if you want to get the best performance they are not automatically so you have to optimize separately for each uh, platform but the overall software is uh, we support different devices uh so that you're muted a uh, follow-up question to this is uh uh, are there custom designed or so are these edge devices can you get it custom designed or commercially available ones like what uh, i think uh, we spoke about right intel nvidia and so w w what i see is that uh, what is the benefit of getting a, a, a hardware custom design mm -hmm. uh, for for applications yeah so yeah so um it, it, there are off the shelf uh, uh, devices available but they're more for uh, initial development and prototype volumes but when you have to go to production in different installations you may need to custom uh, design with exactly the the right set of uh, peripherals and right uh, hardware that you want uh, so in production you may have to go to something custom but uh, off the shelf uh, you can get units that are for development like we gave an example you can get started doing something on as small as a raspberry pi um, and then once you get gotten it all proven and you know what performance you can get for production, you might need to build a custom hardware uh, based on the exact features. Yeah, cool. Uh, so another question, I think that's for me. So how is Icon device management solution different from another dev management solution from Balina, Isla, Devra, Philosophy, CPTC, or those provided by cloud platforms like Google IoT, Azure IoT, AWS, or uh, IBM IoT? Yeah, so Vishan, the, the, the specific question, right? Uh, how is it different? Yes, there are definitely table stake features which are common, common features like uh, managing the system resources, managing the or monitoring the devices. But what we uh, what we focus predominantly in this area is how do you monitor uh, your performance of the applications as well, which is still, you could say, uh, development and process and but the vision is predominantly to make sure that right your as Namni mentioned your applications which will would be resource intensive and then how can you monitor the performance of these applications on these devices which are deployed remotely so uh, across your fleet to find out okay uh, these applications on these set of hardware are not working well and you might have to change something in these scenarios um, at that level is what we trying to uh, take it up Okay, so another question from Sudeep. Uh, uh, from a newcomer's perspective, how emerging and futuristic these technologies are? If anyone wants to make their hands dirty on these technologies, how helpful would it be for future careers? Uh, uh, Namini, you can take it up. Sure, yeah. uh, absolutely. They're, I would say they're current and future. The, uh, I see this whole area evolving, the whole area of computer vision um, uh, evolving in the next, uh, you know, I'd say, at least uh, 10 years to more than 10 years, there's going to be a fairly hot area. For example, self-driving cars, right? The single thing that basically enables self-driving cars is really computer vision, right? And self-driving cars are kind of in the lab today, but they're not out there. You can't go and buy a self-driving car, meaning in the next 10 years, that's all going to happen, right? Uh, so all of those are... Uh, definitely futuristic next 10 years most likely next 20 years we're going to be keep on uh, improving this um, i believe we are in the starting stages of this so it's going to keep evolving for another decade or two at least all right uh, <clears throat> yes uh, so another question which is there for me i think uh, which was offline question so scaling your edge infrastructure and address all all challenges in in head and feet. So how do we scale up these edge devices uh, or edge infrastructure, uh, you could say deployments itself? Uh, that's where I, I think I spoke about, right? When you have these edge deployments in scale, what are the features or the challenges which you can come across, right? Like network problems, you could 
say how do I debug or diagnose uh, issues? That's where Icon as a solution or a platform helps you to make sure that all your large scale edge deployments problems or challenges are being taken care of while while you can easily filter the devices, you can connect to your device which you wish to, you can make sure that you are able to upgrade the, the firmware, you are able to upgrade the models to thousands of these devices once deployed. And not only that, you're able to uh, essentially, as I said, uh, as I demoed it, check out the feed of your cameras which are deployed, make sure that the functioning of these cameras are proper and, and the configurations are up to date. All of them can be monitored through a single platform. So, uh, uh, which will definitely help you to, again, not only scale up better, but also scale up faster. Uh, yes. Uh, Right. So another question for you, Navni, here it is. What is the best framework to run computer vision models with respect to edge devices like mobile? Um, so mobile, uh, when you specifically target mobile, right? When you say mobile, you specifically would be talking about uh, smartphones. Uh, so there's uh, yeah, obviously two big worlds, the iOS world and the Android world. Uh, iOS, uh, really your uh, only best, be best bet and only bet is really Apple provides a bunch of tools for uh, iOS for doing uh, AI deep learning models and, and deploy it on iOS devices. So you have to use the IO, Apple provided frameworks. They have good frameworks, uh, so you have to use them. When you go to Android, then you have a lot of choices, <laughs> as always. So in Android, you have to, of course, fit within the Android software framework, but there are options. You can do it with TensorFlow, you can do it with PyTorch, you can do it with uh, Cafe, uh, so there are a lot of options when you're doing Android, um, but that's for designing the models. When you come down to optimization, then there there is uh, uh, if you're going to choose, um, for example, the best performance if you want, then if you know you're going to use Qualcomm devices, then Qualcomm provides certain Qualcomm specific optimizations that are really powerful. You can get the maximum performance out of it, uh, but then that will not run on non-Qualcomm devices, right? Those optimizations. You know. So it's, it's a, uh, unfortunately at this point in time, there are, you have to choose um, and then do it. You can choose to stay at a slightly agnostic level and not try to get the best performance and stay at the TensorFlow or PyTorch or Cafe level. You'll get good performance, maybe not the best, but you can get good performance on mobile devices. Oh. Thanks, Nandi. Thanks. So we, I'll take. I think we have one last question here. How many people are dealing with selecting devices and require complex and heavy DLL models to provide solution? So I'm, I'm guessing what Gautam wants to ask is that how many people are dealing with edge, edge computing uh, for their application? Not how many. Uh, is it a fair good amount of? Yeah. So how many organizations you could say? There's no number to it, but yeah. Uh, I think he's asking how you people are dealing with it. How are you dealing with it? Yeah. So, so uh, uh, I think uh, the, the key is, uh, uh, Gautam, the processing power of these edge devices are increasing, right? So it depends also on, like when you say high resolution, like 1080p, 1920 by 1080, is it high resolution? Then you can do these on edge devices. So in fact, on a Raspberry Pi, you can easily do uh, high resolution HD images. but your factor would be the frame rate, right? So in, in video, these parameters are, uh, to be clear, uh, you know, to somebody else's question, this is a rapidly evolving area for the next 20, 20 years, 10, 20 years, because in the current CPUs, quite often the fundamental limiting factor is how much processing power you have. So resolution is okay. You can have a high resolution as long as you're only doing one frame per second or on one frame in 10 seconds, it's okay. So you have frame rate, uh, how many frames per second, you have resolution, and then the size of the models. So not all, you can't run the biggest model, highest resolution at the highest frame rate, you can't do that. So you have to choose based on the applications. So that's why it's a very interesting and classical engineering. <laughs> so there's a lot of engineering you have to do to right. you know choose that, that in these dimensions pick the hardware for the right solution. All right. Uh, I think uh, that's it from the question side. Uh, 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 we are good.
We're exactly about that. Yeah, we are on time. Perfect. Again, uh, all the best for anyone looking to uh, you know, build on these computer vision. And to that, you said you have other plans to do more. Yeah, so, so you definitely will be up. The yeah. So we've been going forward, we'll be taking up machine vision as an to move edge models is machine vision, what is the right order? Similar fashion, uh, similar structure, but predominantly machine vision. And again, going forward for uh, drone systems. So these are the two areas which we really will be focusing on. And again, how can I can be of help there in specifically in these two areas? So good. Cool. Uh, I think uh, that's it. Thank you, right? Thank you for joining the webinar. Thank you for spending time with us and asking these very relevant questions. Uh, all the best. Uh, I'll be sharing the recording and then presentation with you all. Uh, to if you wish to take it up later. Thanks again. All the best. Bye.